Okay, so um, on our first day here then of the class regarding blogging, um, I'm going to show you some real-world examples. Like I said, not only do I teach this, I do this in real life for real clients. Uh, and so real clients get real mad when you do, don't do a real good job. And so um, I'm, I'm going to be showing you then examples of some of our clients regarding blogging. So you can open up your web browser. We've got all the popular ones here. Whichever web browser you like, go ahead and open your web browser. I'm going to show you here an example of one of our full featured clients. Because as I said, my company, we, we do uh, websites, we do social media, we do blog writing, we do photography, we do human resources, etc., etc., etc. So here's an example. If you go to this address here, it might be a little hard to, it might be a mouthful, but it's aqui, s texcoco.com, a q u i e s t e x c o c o.com. This is a Mexican food restaurant. Uh, they started in Tijuana in 1990. They had some good success there. Uh, then they came, then they expanded to San Diego in 2008, I think. Then uh, we, we put their, we gave them an online presence in about 2010. They started a website and so forth. And then they've had very good success. They've been featured on various um, uh, culinary avenues, uh, several reviews, you know, in the Reader, in the U Union Tribune, on PBS, etc. They've gotten uh, enough fame that they've actually been featured on various uh, uh, Food Network TV shows and Cooking <clears throat> Channel TV shows. There's been various celebrity chefs coming to the restaurant and doing segments on that restaurant. Um, and then they have done so well that they've gone and expanded now to Los Angeles too, so a larger market. And um, plans are in the works also eventually to go to Las Vegas and so forth. So they've been doing really well. And we like to think that we have some part of that as well because before we teamed up with them, you know, they hadn't expanded that far, they hadn't gotten that sort of fame. So the point is that on this website, this is an example of the many features uh, that you would consider a full service web presence and examples of what my various free classes teach you. So you could do it yourself to some degree. This website in total, for example, this is, a, this is known as a WordPress website. Um, you see that it's very colorful. There's lots of buttons and content and great photos. We shot the photos, we, we designed the graphics, we wrote the text, we set up the website. Um, there's galleries and slideshows, there's a blog. And if you, if you search on the search engines Mexican food or authentic food in San Diego or various sorts of keywords, this client shows up on various searches. Uh, that's because with this client they engage in many of the aspects, most of the aspects of SEO, search engine optimization. One is that you need a nice functional modern website, you need blog content, you need social media. So at a glance this has this has that because the website on its own might be really nice but social media is also very important uh, let's say this website this uh, this client never had a website let's say they just had a, a shop on Main Street a, a restaurant on Main Street um, how would a traditional offline restaurant attract customers. Some amount of customers are going to show up simply because they walked by the, the, the restaurant and then they walk in. They, they're hungry at that moment, they see a restaurant, they walk in. But that's not how a restaurant will live, will it? A restaurant needs advertising and marketing. A restaurant needs uh, print ads, ads on the newspaper, 
ads on television, on the radio, on billboards, etc. That's marketing, advertising. Modern marketing, modern advertising is social media. So how many of you have heard of this little website called Facebook? Probably most of you. How many of you have heard of Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, uh, Google+, Plus, YouTube, um, what else? On and on and on. There's lots of lots of social networks out there. Marketing platforms, a way to reach an audience. So if you take my social media class, we talk about creating these profiles and more, and we talk about using them effectively and reaching an audience and, and getting traffic and customers and clients and all of that. That's for another class. Being online on social media also helps you get found by the search engines, search engine optimization. What also helps you get found then is a blog because this stuff here is not going to change that often. We've got perhaps a different meal to show off, but that's not going to change every, every month or every week. It's going to be a slideshow of five or six pictures. Does it need to change that often? We change these at the top here, these calls to action recently, just to show that this restaurant has been featured on various cooking channel and travel channel shows. Watch the video. And that there's various events and everything. What's going to change is the blog. This is what's going to update. This content that we're putting out there, the search engines will see this, potentially. And therefore, when someone searches top-rated Mexican food restaurants, there's a blog post about that. When we're searching for something about celeb local celebrity chefs, there's a blog post about that. Uh, we're creating, in short, blog content to try to cover the bases of what people could be searching for because that's how people discover things nowadays on a search engine Google being Yahoo because there's more than one you don't uh, I don't really like really saying Google it I don't like that term Google's not the only search engine people use other search engines Bing, Yahoo Google you may never touch Bing you may never use it you may have heard of it but hundreds of millions of people do so I usually say search you're gonna search it search engines I don't really Focus on Google, I focus on all of them. Question? Yeah, how, how sensitive is um, a search engine to changes in a blog? Do you look at um, a paragraph or a sentence? I mean, it automatically sort of detects that there's been change in the content? Is that how it works? Um, I believe it, it can be as simple as a sentence, but that one sentence won't help you as much as writing a paragraph, let's say. So we'll talk about that. Yes, we're going to develop what's a good schedule of how often should we blog and how much should we blog. But in short, when you know that the big, one of the big secrets is you need to blog um, a good amount and relatively often, that's the big secret. If you're not doing that at all, then you're not possibly helping yourself to be found. But we'll talk about the details, definitely. And so here's a preview of a few of the latest blog posts. And if you visit the blog section at the top, you will see more. You might say, okay, blogging. I, I have a profession or a concept that I do have the idea of blogging about. I have ideas. Let's say I'm a, I'm a, um, I like to write about politics. So I've got something to say. I've got something to write about. And I want to, I want to, write about that. I want to blog about that. But maybe you've got a restaurant. How would you use the blog? Again, here's the here's some examples. I'm scrolling through a few pages. I'm going to page two in the blog. And um, as I said, this is a Mexican food restaurant. But it doesn't serve nachos and California burritos and that sort of thing. It serves traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. This is barbacoa de borrego traditional lamb barbecue in the style of Texcoco, which is a which is a, a city near Mexico City. So it's traditional Mexico City style lamb barbecue, slow roasted lamb barbecue. Um, and so you might think of the term barbecue and then you think, you know, American barbecue with the barbecue sauce and, and all of that. Um, this is a different style, Mexican style, traditional. So the blog serves a few purposes. One of them is to educate potential customers 
and the media and such. What is so special about this restaurant? What is served here? Uh, what is barbecue? What is barbacoa? And so forth. Um, so, for example, there's a there's a blog post. Let's do lamb barbacoa style. So, there's a blog post that you can read that goes on to explain what is lamb barbecue, traditional lamb plates, etc. Text. Um, part of SEO is figuring out the keywords that define your website. So when someone searches Mexican food, well, that's a very generic term, but if you're using that keyword Mexican food in your site, you could be found, but then you could be pushed aside by Taco Bell and uh, El Pollo Loco, etc., etc. So that's a very generic keyword. But what if people are searching for traditional Mexican food? You know, I wouldn't equate that with Taco Bell. I wouldn't equate that with, you know, Rubio's, etc. But our site, this site, this client site, is traditional. And that kind of keyword is found in a blog here, in an about page there. That keyword is found throughout the site. Maybe someone is searching for um, lamb barbecue, lamb barbacoa. Those are also keywords that people might be searching for. And so they're included in this blog post and other parts of the site. So this class, not that it's not that it's a continuation of my other class. All my classes relate, and you don't need to take them in any sort of sequence. But the other class, the SEO class, we spend time in there developing our keyword strategy, figuring out what the keywords are of your site. Once we know those keywords and concepts, then we apply them. And one way we apply them is via blogging. So here, this assumes that we already did our keyword strategy um, plan. And we figured out, these are some of the keywords I want to be found by. These are some of the keywords I am currently being found by. And then, so then we're going to develop blog content that further helps us get found. I was just looking at our statistics for this client, and um, there's one of the popular, one of the most popular pages on the site and I think it's pretty far back in the blog. I think it's way back on page five. Um, yeah, this one right here. What is Wheat La Coche? Now, does anyone know what Wheat La Coche is? Does anyone know how to pronounce it? No, uh, yes. Exactly. So if you didn't know, this is a traditional Mexican delicacy. This is corn. This is corn that has been infected by a fungus. You may think that sounds gross, but no, because you know we eat a lot of fungus um, in different ways, don't we? Mushrooms. But this is uh, a corn that has this this fungus growing on it that gives the corn a different kind of flavor. Um, it's a very interesting it's a very interesting taste, and and uh, you know humans have figured out how to eat everything. And so here at this restaurant, this serves a very traditional thing that is not really known throughout, outside of Mexican cuisine, even uh, pretty much in, in traditional Mexican cuisine circles. So here's the, here's the little kernels. They turn like these interesting shades of gray and blue and black and, and, and really interesting. And so they serve it at this restaurant. This blog post is to educate that they're serving this very unique, authentic food that almost no one else has in the county. And so this blog post actually is one of the most popular pages on the site. It pops up all the time when people do a regular search. Wheat La Coche. What is Wheat La Coche? It's got that keyword, and it does get found a lot on, on Yahoo, on Bing, on Google, on the search engines. And that gets traffic to this site because people search that and they get traffic to this site, they read about it, and they say, oh, this restaurant serves that. Maybe I want to buy one because there's an order now. Maybe they want to visit. And showing down here, it does have also some social media traction. It is showing that it is being also shared, and it's visible on the social networks. 
We'll talk about this. Obviously, we'll talk about it deeper in the social media class, but you should be seeing that this is a piece, pieces of a, of a larger puzzle. You have a great website, you have great content, like blogs, you're also on social media, couple those things together with other concepts, you're going to get traffic. Um, that's the, 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 the smallest that I can distill. What is SEO? Search Engine Optimization. All of these techniques to get you traffic to your website with as many angles as possible. For example, social media. This gets tweeted out. The, the, the client tweets it out to their 700 followers. And so 700 potential people see it. Maybe some of those retweet it, so more people see it. Some of those might retweet again, more people see it. So it's marketing, it's advertising, it's reaching more of an audience. Maybe someone visits this page from a search, and they like it, and then they share it on Facebook. So now we've gotten some free advertising from someone that came from a search engine. And so the why of why you would blog is, again, more visibility, putting more of your content online, capitalizing on your keywords so that when people search, they could possibly find you. To educate people about your, your products or your organization or your company. So throughout this blog is a few is a few different concepts being balanced. One is educating potential visitors what the food is. The other is also self-promotional. Um, there was the taste in LA recently. This is a great event where many restaurants had sort of like a bazaar where they showed off their food and gave free samples, uh, you know, more community outreach and so forth. <clears throat> so this was very successful. A lot of people learned about the restaurant, um, getting foot traffic for the one in Los Angeles. Um, the one in Los Angeles, the, re the restaurant in Los Angeles already has more visitors and more profits than the one here in San Diego. Um, so this is also a blog post about getting rated on Zagat. This is a big deal in the restaurant business. This is one of the big names in restaurant reviews. Uh, they don't just give away their, their reviews. Um, restaurants have to earn them um, stringently. And so the restaurant got rated. So you see there's some self-congratulatory types of blog posts and then some educating about the food. But all of these are creating content when someone, someone searches um, Jonathan Gold's top restaurant picks. Jonathan Gold, if you didn't know, is a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, critic, food critic, for the LA Times most recently. I think he's also written for Rolling Stone and a variety of magazines. Pretty famous in the world of restaurant critique. He just released his, um, his book, 101 Essential Restaurants. This client is one of them. So that helps when you've got Andrew Zimmern, um, Mar uh, Marcella Valladolid, etc., chefs visiting the restaurant, um, that, that all helps to uh, drive more traffic to your, to your website. So in short, blogging then helps you get traffic. That's the big why. Why would you blog? We're going to have an exercise a little bit later where we do brainstorming where you might think, okay, maybe I'm getting sold on the idea that I need a blog. I don't know what to write about. My, my website, my business is so unique, I don't know what to write about. We'll have an activity later where we brainstorm that. But right now we're talking about the why. Why would you need to blog? Does it make sense? Does anyone have any questions? Let me show you another example from another client. If you visit elsavalencia.com, Elsa is a jeweler who makes her own jewelry in her studio, her own brand, gold jewelry. 
handmade, one-off pieces. Uh, very elegant styles, very interesting and unique styles of jewelry. She has this online shop and she's got all these great pieces. You look at the price, you might say that's a little pricey, but then you read the blog to get the background about the creation of the pieces, of the meaning of the pieces. Maybe something resonates when you read about that particular pendant and it entices you a bit more um, to purchase, um, to see that she has this great style and this voice and this jewelry and you feel a connection and, and you feel that this um, jewelry would look great with you and your style. So if you read the blog, Uh, it's, it focuses a bit more on the photography because, again, the pictures really show the jewelry. It's really, very nice jewelry. And her process and her creativity, what it means to her, what maybe it means to you, and then enticement to, to buy it, to... to uh, to be part of this style. So here's an example of how then blogging would work for this website, different from the other one. Uh, it's another e-commerce site in that it's selling a product, but um, in a completely different market, of course. But again, to educate the, the users to put out content so the search engines find you and bring you traffic and such. And very recently, she was actually contacted by, by Vogue magazine, uh, the Mexican edition of Vogue magazine, to have her pieces featured on a future issue. So uh, again, it's a form of marketing, of advertising, of getting your name out there, your brand, your product, your nonprofit organization, your art show, your, your band, whatever it is you're trying to do online, search engine optimization is important. It helps you get found in the sea of yet another realtor, yet another health consultant, yet another life coach, yet another dog walker, yet another bakery, yet another jeweler. There's always going to be yet another one of your niche, even if you think it's the most unique one. There's always going to be another one uh, either doing the same thing or very similar to what you're doing. To differentiate, to get ahead of them, you're going to be blogging. You're going to be putting out content that is going to set you apart from the competition. And so we'll talk about setting up, today we'll talk about setting up a blog. If you don't have a blog, uh, I'll get a show of hands in a moment, but if you don't have a blog, we'll create one today for free, and we'll talk about how to use it, and what to write, and I'll have like a blog checklist for you, and uh, we'll do the brainstorming, and it'll be very hands-on. We'll be doing some lecture, conceptual stuff a bit, but then we'll be mostly hands-on very soon. So, just to get a show of hands, how many of you have never written any blog, any blogging, have, have never done any blogging before? Okay, most people, that's fine. So then the rest of you have done some blog. Okay. How many of you currently have a website? Any website? Okay. Um, and so, if you do have a website, how many of you have a WordPress website? Okay. I mention that because WordPress, the two that I've shown so far, and I can show other clients, or you can just go look at our portfolio on our website, pmdinteractive.com, which is also a WordPress website. You can go look at the portfolio. Uh, I mention WordPress because WordPress has the largest market share of web design software. WordPress is software to create a website. And there's many software out there to do that. There's Dreamweaver, Squarespace, Wix, Joomla, um, Front Page, HTML, on and on. There's many ways to make a website. WordPress, at the moment, has the largest market share. I believe it's about 20% globally, 
which means hundreds of millions of websites in the world use WordPress. Um, it's been around lots of years, seven years, five years or something, in the in internet time, that's a long time. And it's been around a long time. It has a lot of great features out of the box. It's very powerful and has a lot of very useful aspects that help us with our SEO. The great thing about the WordPress software, one of the things is its price, which is a very affordable zero dollars. WordPress software is free. Um, it's other aspects are not free, like getting online, having your own .com and such. That's not free, uh, and we'll talk about those prices and and costs of doing business and such. But the WordPress software itself is free, and so therefore this class we're going to focus on WordPress. You may have a different kind of website, but the concepts will still apply. Your screen will be different, your, your software will be different, but the concepts will still apply. And so we're going to, together, we're going to create a free WordPress site. You might already have one. You can use it if you'd like, or create this free one just to practice, just to make mistakes, and that sort of thing, and then delete it or keep it. But we're going to create a free WordPress site soon. We'll talk in general terms. If you've never used WordPress before, a quick crash course on it, but I have other classes that you should take for deeper <coughs> understanding of WordPress. And then we'll focus on, okay, we know a little bit of WordPress if we've never used it, and now let's write a, let's, let's talk about writing blog posts, crafting a good title and using keywords and all of that stuff. So that's the, the concept of the course. Why, why we need blogging, what, why is it important? how to use the software, and what to write, and how to write blogging for SEO, one of the aspects to help you get traffic to your website. And so, what we're going to do is, we're going to take our first break. We usually take a break every hour or so. And we're going to take our first break. I'll turn the printer on. If you'd like a copy of the syllabus, you don't need it. If, but if you'd like, you can print it. We're going to take a break. Uh, you also want to confirm that you've enrolled. We want to make sure that you got the sticker and that you used it on our website. If you're not sure, see me. You need to enroll in the class. And then you also need to make sure you've signed in. And then if you leave early, you can sign out. You don't have to sign out now. Let's take a break. It's 10.32. We'll be back at 10.42, and then we'll actually set up a, a WordPress site.